Welcome everybody to challenge number three, start sorting a container at a time or embellishment organization. This is really when we jump in to those overwhelming embellishments. So thanks so much for coming. And I'm just going to go ahead and get started right away. For those of you who are new, there are many of you who um, this is your first webinar. So uh, just a couple of pieces of information. You have a little question um, box on your navigation pane. So if you think of something as I'm talking, go ahead and type it into the question box. You can hear me, but I can't hear you. But if you think of a question during the presentation, type it into the question box. And at the end of the presentation, I'll answer all of those questions. Um, even though some of them may be answered during the course. You just don't want to forget it, just in case I don't answer it. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tiffany Spaulding, and I am organization obsessed, which is why I teach this class. And I love it. It's so much fun. Um, um, what was the other thing? Oh, if you're new, you can't see me either. You can just hear me, and you can see the PowerPoint slides that are going on on my screen. This whole session is being recorded, so if you miss any of it or um, you have to step away from your computer, don't worry about it. We're going to record the session and we'll post it up on your website. And at the end of the presentation, I'll let you know how to get back and see it on the website as well. So with that, let's jump into this week's winner, Marsha Montgomery. I don't know if Marsha, if you're online with us or not. Hopefully you are and you're cheering for yourself, but um, the post. Now, for those of you who are new, if you're part of the Facebook group, or you can also email to qualify for this competition, but all you have to do is post up what your progress is and let us know that you're actively working on getting organized. And then everybody's post gets thrown into a drawing, and we draw one out, and um, somebody wins a $25 scrap rack gift certificate. So this week, it's Marsha Montgomery, and her update says, I started over 10 feet of paper. Oh, my goodness. Um, now that I know how much I have, I won't be buying what I obviously don't need. So. Uh, awareness is key, Marsha, and thanks so much for taking the challenge and just doing an outstanding job. Ten feet of paper is a lot of paper to get through in one week. This is a previous post from somebody on our group, <laughs> Sarah Burns, just about purging and how she went through it. And some, so some of us have some real challenges with purging, how to handle it, and what to do with the things that we purge. So I just thought two things were really important. Um, I decided if I couldn't make a quick decision about where the purge belonged or how I would use it, then, I, then it should just be purged, and I haven't regretted this so far. Another quick tip, I had fun compiling things into scenes and surprising friends and family who also scrap that I knew would be applicable to. For example, I had a lot of stuff left over from a cruise. I have no immediate plans to go on a cruise, but I have a cousin who just returned from one, so I sent all that stuff off to her. So just some creative ways to feel really good about getting rid of those um, purge things here in this tip from Sarah. And this is posted on our Facebook page, I believe. And so if you're not a member of the Facebook group, but you do do Facebook, I would really encourage you to jump on and join that group just because there's so many great ideas that come from the group. Um, and also, you may have a great idea that will inspire somebody else to be better at getting organized or have a good way to purge. And so I hope that you'll share your ideas with us there as well. If you have an idea that you want us to post on Facebook because you're not a Facebooker, we're happy to do that too. You can just email it to customer service at thescrapwreck.com and Joanna can post it up for you. So what are our goals in this webinar? Our first goal is to understand how to combine your embellishments for, for embellishments for easy access, why it's important to combine your embellishments, and then to begin the process of sorting those stickers, die cuts, buttons, brad speeds, blah, blah, blah. So if you're new to the webinar, you're wondering why in heck does Tiffany have a picture of a silverware drawer on this page? That doesn't have anything to do with scrapbooking. But it has a lot to do with organization and keeping things together you would use together. So a silverware drawer is a thing that most of us have and most of us understand the value of. And that when you go when you're gonna set the table, you go to your silverware drawer and everything you need is in one place. It makes it easy to set the table. After the dishes are washed and you're emptying the dishwasher, all the silverware is together in the dishwasher, and it all goes back into the same place. So not only was it easy to use the silverware, it was easy to put the silverware away when you were done. Now, if you treated your silverware like your scrapbooking supplies, and you put your knives in a basket, and your spoons in a jar, and you hung your forks decoratively on the wall, it would be a pain in the neck to set the table. It would be really a pain in the neck to unload the dishwasher and put things away. Yet that's exactly what we do with our scrapbook supplies. 
So as you're going through the process of getting organized, I want you to keep that silverware drawer in mind and constantly be thinking to yourself, am I keeping things together I would use together? How am I going to make these things visible and accessible for use, but also really easy to put away? One of the things that creates this organization is that we end up with piles of stuff left over from a project at the end of our workspace, which gets added to a pile left over from the last project or the project before that. And so we create a big mess. That's because it's difficult to put away. So you want to keep things arranged in a way that you can use them together and that it's also easy to put them um, away. So get ready. That's always our first step with the webinar. So you're going to gather the things together. You need to complete the challenge. So in this case, sorting templates, some sort of tool for putting things away. So Ziploc bags, file folders, scrap rack pages, toast, boxes, bins, however you're storing your supplies, you need to make sure you have those things cleaned out and ready to go. You need to have a plan. Where will the things go once they've been sorted, stored, and cataloged? And that's going to be into your organized only zone. So if you missed the last webinar where we talked about creating that organized only zone, it would be a good idea maybe to go back and rewatch that. But in a nutshell, it's a clean, empty space waving for you to place your organized things into that space only. And then, of course, your purge box, which, again, if you've been on board for the first couple of challenges, you know once you've created that purge box, you're always going to have that purge box next to you uh, when you're crafting so that w as you come across things that you can purge, leftovers that you don't want to keep, you have a place to put them. Keeping it simple, keeping it easy is going to really prevent you from slipping back into those habits of just sort of piling things up. Keep it easy. Okay, sorting templates. Some of you used sorting templates last week to sort paper. Some of you will just use the box method. So if you didn't create those sorting templates, you'll want to do that. Um, so again, 12 by 18 paper is the way to go with that. Writing the main category in the top left corner in your list of subcategories down the side beneath it, and we've got some images of that coming up. So if this is your first time with us, you'll see the images of that as well. Here we go. Those are the sorting templates. So now you see in the picture on the left side, those were the first sorting templates that I worked with. And um, they were 12 by 12 paper, which I thought was brilliant at the time. But once you start piling something that's 12 by 12 on top of 12 by 12 paper, you can't see it anymore. So I switched over to using the 12 by 18, which you can see in the right side picture. And um, I just bought a 12 by 18 drawing tablet at the dollar store, so a great place to get you know, you can use construction paper, but it's quite a bit more expensive. You get 25 sheets for a dollar at the dollar store. And then I just lined it off, and you can see each of the categories. Now, again, if you're just jumping in with us for this third um, challenge, you're going to want to go back and read the four-section system um, so that you understand what we're talking about when we're talking about creating those sorting templates and creating your themes list. You can also kind of shortcut the process by getting on the Facebook group and asking some questions. Um, and just reading through your workbook. And so we'll go through where all that information is at the end of this challenge as well for those of you who are just getting on board now. Get set. Spread your sorting templates out across the floor, over the furniture, on the countertops, wherever you have room. So you can see this picture in the bottom is somebody's rainbow section, and she's got all her sorting templates spread out on this giant dining room table, and all her supplies are then grouped by color. Um, so. One of the things we talked about previously and I'll reiterate now is this is a great way to do it. Um, if you know you're going to have time to clean everything up and put, you know, to go and through and stack it all up and then put it all away, just use care with the amount of time that you've got. Because again, what I don't want you to do is get stuff spread out all over the place and then not be able to have the time to actually finish, finish the task. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. So, you're going to sort just one container at a time or less. And that's what I was talking about. It's um, going to depend on time. Once it's sorted, group the items in each category by size. Now, grouping the categories, by, the items by size is important no matter which storage tool you're using. Obviously, if you're using the scrap rack system, the smaller items, you're going to, you want to be more economical about you, how you fill your pages. So if you've got all your small stuff, they're going to go in the small pocket pages, medium, large, et cetera. But even if you're using Ziploc bags or file folders, you want those small items in the front of that file folder or the front of that Ziploc bag so you really get a better visual on what's in that um, storage. So put each of the storage pages, bags, or file folders into the appropriate section of your four-section system. So again, whether you're using um, 
a scrap rack and you're putting them on a spinder or you're using some type of file folder in that four section system, you're going to put them in in that order and then start on your next container. So again, unless you have a place where you can leave a lot of stuff out, just work one small container at a time and then put away that section of product. So how will that look when, as you go through? So through the four section system, you, the first thing you've got is alphanumeric. So here's a 12 by 12 sheet of punch out alphabet stickers and that's that first thing in the alphanumeric section. Here are some chipboard letters and some brad uh, or um, buttons that are also alphabet um, based things. It's kind of hard to see the buttons. But again, when you go to that alphabet section, you want to see all of your different alphabets. And then again, you want to keep things together by size within the alphabet category as well. Now into that theme section, so we've got baseball on the left and travel on the right. But you can see once you start putting things into your scrap rack pages, um, it's the, the, particularly the baseball page, there's three pages stacked up there. There's a double extra, there's in the very back, there's a super size single, then there's a double extra long, and on top of that is the Fantastic Four or the Fabulous Four page. So you really can see through your supplies with those clear pages pretty easily, even more so in the travel page where you've got several layers of pages that you can kind of see through as you're looking into that travel section. 4th of July in how your calendar section might look and then how your rainbow section might look. Now I know for those of you who have been on board with me before, the rainbow is a huge challenge for people because we are trained in every magazine and every organization thing I've ever read or seen um, that where it comes to scrapbooking supplies, we're trained to separate those supplies, all your brads together, all your clips together, all your ribbons together, your tags together, rather than putting things together by color. So when you group things together by color, some really great things happen. First of all, um, you eliminate having to look in 10 different containers for things. So if you, let's say you needed a blue button or you thought, I'm going to use a blue, blue button. And you went to your blue button and there was really no button in there that matched. And then you think, well, maybe I'll go with a bread or maybe I'll go with a flower. Maybe I'll go with an eyelet. Now you're going to all those different places and looking. Whereas when you start grouping all of your color stuff together, when you go to blue, there's the buttons you thought you were going to use, right, right there with the blue category, and all of a sudden you remember, oh my gosh, I have these tiles, or I have these bingo chips, these things would be perfect right now, and I would have totally forgotten about them had I been looking for things by type of thing. So not only does it make it faster and easier to find those blue buttons, it also inspires you to use a lot more of the products that you've been collecting over the years and then just sort of forgot about. You also become a better designer in the respect that you stop thinking about things in terms of individual items and you start looking at your pages or projects in general, whether it's a card or a frame or whatever, you look at it and you go, this page really needs some green. And then you go to your green section and you see all the options that you've got for green. So you become more of an artistic designer rather than a product-based or product-driven designer. And don't forget those scraps, right? You want to integrate those scraps right into your um, section. So if you've got scraps of paper, they're going to go right into that rainbow section or whatever at the same time. So let's not, don't leave those out as you're going along putting things together. Finally, after you start getting things together, then you can add the labels to your sections. Now, if you're using a scrap rack, you've got made the big dividers in there, and those are really going to be major um, indicators. So the dividers might say themes A through F or whatever it is or T through Z or whatever. So if you so then you can group major categories behind that. And then I just use the little stick on label tab. So in the right side picture you're just kind of seeing a spider link flat on the table. Another tip if I haven't already said it, so it'd be using a scrap rack. You want to load your spinders off the base. So take them all the way off the base, open them up on a flat surface, load your pages on, and then close them and lock them and put them on your base unit. The picture on the right would be, if you saw the, the divider tab on top of it, it would say uh, themes S through Z or whatever it is. And then behind that, I would have a sports section. And then you see the little tags, basketball, baseball, golf, soccer, tennis. Those are just self-adhesive labeling tabs. We sell them on our website. You can buy them at Office Depot. That's actually the brand that we carry on the website. 
and you just stick them onto your divider pages. And we talked a little bit about this um, using those, um, or I'm sorry, excuse me, not on your divider pages. You just stick them onto your basic storage pages so that once you flip the sports tab, you've got your general sports and then you've got all of your individual sports. So again, if you're just joining us, we, we want to go back to that thought process of keeping things together I would use together. So with sports, um, things like cleats and grass and whistles and banners that say go team and pom-poms and trophies, those are all generic things that could go with any sport. So if you separate your sports out by baseball, football, basketball, whatever, you'll miss seeing those generic things when you're working on a basic sports page. But if you put all your sports together, then you see all of those things in one fell swoop. And this is also going to come in really handy when we talk about packing up to go to a Crawford class. You're going to have to hunt for each individual sport to make sure you have all of your sports stuff. You're just going to pull your sports section and take it with you to that Crawford class. So in this situation, we've labeled the dividers with a major label or a really general label. And then behind that, we've added those little stick-on tabs to the pages that indicate what exactly is in that page or that group of pages. So if you're using a scrap rack, this is how it might look. And this is actually a double base unit right here. And hard to see kind of the categories that are in the front. There's obviously maybe there's Big Ben there and the, and the Eiffel Tower. So that's themes, travel. And then it's going to go through the calendar year. And then you can really see in the back how we kind of go through that orange, green, blue, purple, working our way back to black in the scrap rack setup. So why are we doing a container at a time? I've mentioned a little bit about this in the beginning, but I just want to reinforce how important it is that you don't overwhelm yourself or that you don't create a huge mess that you can't clean up in time um, to actually get the benefit of the sorting time. So if you, if you do just one container at a time, even if it's just a small little box of buttons or whatever, and you sort those buttons all, let's say they're going to mostly be by color, you sort them by color, you Ziploc bag them, drop them in your storage pages, and then you move on to your next little box of flowers or whatever it is. But you've, you've been able to accomplish that little task without, um, for some reason, running out of time and having to scoop everything together and dump it into a box and start again. So it's much better to work in little tiny steps where you might only sort, you know, a few dozen items and put them away than it is to sort hundreds of items and um, not be able to get them put, not be able to follow through to the finish of, of putting them away in your storage system. So you can just keep that in mind. I'm going to talk about it as we go along. I talked about it a little bit about paper last time. But it's really important because what happens to your brain is your brain gets overwhelmed when it sees so much stuff, and then you kind of shut down. So you really want to be aware of that and um, sort of keep that in check also. And it isn't just your brain that that can happen to. You, you might be going along just fine, and then you have all this stuff spread out all over the table, and someone in your family or a friend comes in and goes, oh, my gosh, what a mess that is. How are you ever going to clean that up? And all of a sudden, your brain starts getting this sort of negative energy, and you're like, yes, oh, my gosh, I made a mess. What am I going to do? Now I have to go to the grocery store, and I'm not going to have time to make dinner. And so all these things start happening in your brain. So sort of um, keep that, that thought in mind. I need to work in a small range so I can finish in the allotted time and avoid becoming overwhelmed or frustrated with the process. Okay, so what do you do with those little things, though, like buttons and brads and eyelets? So I got these really cute jars of um, buttons from a girlfriend who bought them for me because they were adorable and they matched my scrapbook room. But I can't store them, and I can't. they have to go in a drawer like this, or they have to go on a shelf or whatever. I have to open them up every time. I have to search for them as individual containers. And so what I did was I just took them all out of the containers, and I sorted them by, two, by size. There were some bigger ones and some smaller ones into these little Ziploc bags. And then I was able to put the Ziploc bags right, just right into that color section um, of my scrap rack. And I also took the ribbon off the lid, and I saved the lid because I thought that was a cute giant button. So the little round plastic containers moved on. But I was able to take all of those buttons, put them in Ziploc bags, and store them right in with the color category. Now, if I had left them in the jars that they came in and put them, you know, up on a shelf or over the window or hung them from a, I don't know, something, then they wouldn't be, when I flipped to purple, I wouldn't see those purple buttons right there. I would have to remember that they were somewhere else and I would have to go get them. 
So um, I'm not saying that you can't put decorative items around your room. I'm just saying make sure that you have some of those things in your four section system in the color group so that when you need them, you can find them. And again, this is going to come in to be really important when you're going to a crop or class. Because if you're going to a crop, let's say you're going to go for a weekend crop, if all of your buttons are in a jar over the window, uh, you have to get the step ladder, get the jar down, and then you have to pack that jar with you when you go to a crop. Flowers are another one that we tend to do this with. Ribbon is something that we tend to do this with. Now you have to go through all those jars and pull things out, or you have to pack the jar itself, which means you're going to take way more things, way more boxes or containers than you actually need to take. Whereas if you have it all in your scrap rack or in your four section system file folders or whatever you're using, then you're just able to take that rainbow section knowing that you have flowers and buttons and ribbons with you and you can leave those up as a decorative item. I hope that makes sense to everyone. Here's the, the ribbons again. So ribbon and fiber. Now, some of you are ribbon junkies. I know you're out there. You can raise your hands around and wave your hands around and say, yes, that's me. Ribbon is a fun and wonderful thing to work with, but it comes in, sometimes it comes in these huge lengths where we buy a whole spool of ribbon because it's um, cheaper or because it's adorable and it's a dollar. I don't want you to reinvent the wheel. So if, you're, if you have small amounts of ribbon and you can wrap them around the ribbon and fiber storage cards and clip them together, then you can put those cards right in. So you see we have some purples, blues, some neutrals, reds, blacks. Those can go right into that section, uh, that color section. So when you're working on something and you need black, you're going to see those black ribbons. But if you already have hundreds of spools of ribbon, what I want you to do initially is just get them into that drawer or shelf or whatever you've got in the four section system. Well, there's actually it's only going to be three. There's going to be theme, there's going to be calendar year, and there's going to be the rainbow. So you need to line up those spools in those categories. So um, again, you can say, oh, I need black. And then if you just need to open your ribbon drawer, you'll see your things in rainbow. So rather than just throwing them into a big tote where they're all jumbled up and you have to dig through them, you're not going to use them that way. It's not going to happen. You're just going to end up buying more and throwing, that, throwing it into that big drawer or that big tote. So find a way to get them lined up in color, in theme, in um, calendar year so that you can actually see them and use them. Um, and if you want to take them off and wrap them around the ribbon cards and get them in there, that works too. Um, you just have a lot of work to do, most of you, through this process. So if you can get them organized in a tote or in that drawer to start with and then start migrating them over into everything else that you've got. Um, again, if you can put them all together, easier to go to a crop. Um, but for some people, ribbon is one of those things that we love and we're passionate about. And we buy spool after spool of it, especially when it's only a dollar. Um, so keep that in mind. But you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to make things hooked together in your brain so that you know if you open your ribbon drawer, your rainbow is going to be there and you're going to be able to find what you need or your themed ribbon. Or you can put it around the card. Stickers and die cuts, again, start with a small stack um, or container, maybe half a container, whatever is manageable. So if you have this drawer full of stickers, you could just grab a handful and sort and organize those stickers and then put them away, and then you could grab the next handful and do the same thing. Just don't let yourself get overwhelmed trying to sort 10,000 stickers um, all at one time to the point that it's, the whole task becomes um, sort of mind-numbing. So this week's challenge is to sort and store one container a day for four out of the next seven days. And a container can be anything. It can be a small shoebox. It could be a giant Rubbermaid tote. So maybe you pick and choose wisely. We're going to add um, containers of embellishments as we go along through the challenge. So each week, whatever you don't get sorted this week, you're gonna, there's going to be a little bit more added on next week so that you can just keep working through. Now, for those of you who are new, I want you to remember that um, there are lots of uh, participants on board with us who have done this ch the challenges many times. So don't feel like there's no way I'm going to get my room done in eight weeks. You don't have to do it in eight weeks. Some of you will. Some of you have the time or, you, you know, you can work it in. And hallelujah to all of you. But the vast majority of people can't do it in eight weeks. But what you're establishing in this eight-week um, challenge is a method for doing it. And if you just keep repeating paper or embellishments or ink chalk pens or whatever it is that we're going to work on in the coming week, 
you just keep repeating that and doing it a little bit at a time. And every time you bring something new into your collection, you have a place to put it. You know that it's going to go into a theme or a calendar or a rainbow. So you can put new things away without them ever hitting a pile or being stuffed in a closet. Those are your real goals. And there are gals who have been through the challenge every time since we started, and they just do a little bit each time. They use the challenge to keep themselves motivated. They use the Facebook group to motivate other people and share and support what they've done. So don't feel like you're not, you're not going to get it done in eight weeks and you're going to have been a failure. You're going to be a whopping success at the end of eight weeks because you will see really the, th the things that you have had time to sort and organize how useful and how easy it is to use those things. Okay, so sort and store one container a day for the next four out of seven days. If you didn't finish sorting your paper, I want you to start four to six inches of paper. Um, whatever you've got time for, and just add that to your, your um, collection. And then I want you to post on Facebook or email us um, if, with your progress post. So if it, you can do that through the Facebook group, or again, you can do that by emailing Joanna at customer service at the scrap .com. So just quickly, um, Little Chinese proverb, the longest journey begins with a single step. Well, you're on step three already, right? You're well on your way. So um, you should feel really great about what you're doing. You have a plan in place now, so you can just um, stay the course, and slowly but surely you'll work through and get everything done. Um, so a little bit of discipline is going to go a long way. Don't allow new products to pile up. This new system will encourage you to think before you buy. So when you're choosing something in the scrapbook store at Michael's or Joanne or Hobby Lobby, when you look at that thing, hopefully now you're going to hear my little voice going, what are you going to do with that? Where are you going to put it? What does it go with? So that before you even purchase that item, you know exactly where it's going to go when you get home, and you'll be able to put it away right away where, where it belongs. Now with that said, don't be afraid to start a section with one thing. What do I mean by that? If you go to Michael's and you buy a ballet sticker and you don't have any other ballet things, but you know you've got this ballet event coming up and that's why you bought the sticker, when you get home, don't be afraid to start a, a ballet section or in your sports section, however you're going to think about that, by taking that ballet sticker and putting it in that the black bag or that scrap rack page and labeling it ballet, and then as you buy more ballet things, they'll already have a home because you've already started that place. So don't think to yourself that just because you only have one item for that category that you shouldn't, you know, set it aside and start it later. Don't, that, um, don't let yourself procrastinate that way because you'll be surprised how fast it is to put things away once you've started that section. It makes a whole lot more sense. It makes it a lot easier. So we went through the scrap rack products. Um, before at the end of the first webinar. These are just some images of the scrap rack pages. So there's a huge variety that are going to fit everything by 12 by, from 12 by 12 paper to little tiny Ziploc bags full of embellishments. And you can see all of these and descriptions of them. A lot of them have videos with them um, on our website. And I'll, I'll take you there and show you how to get to the pages and stuff too on the website. These are the new pages that just came in in July. So um, again, just another bigger variety of different things. Um, this one at the bottom, the double picture at the bottom, that's a double-sided page called the Page Planner page. And that works great not only for project planning. As you can see, I have it set up with photos and then the embellishments and stickers I'm going to use and then the paper on the back. But this Project Planner page also works great if you buy a whole collection. So you might buy 10 sheets of paper, two sheets of stickers, and a couple embellishments that all go together. So this allows you to put all of those things into one page as well. And that's called the Project Planner page. Okay, so um, next week we're going to start, we're going to do pictures, but I wanted to show you quickly how to find things on the website. So let me get my bar here. Oops, get my bar back up here. So if you go to thisgraphback.com, it's going to look like this. It's going to be this bright pink, you know, sort of welcome page, and you just click on the big scrap rack logo. It'll take you into the website. Over here on the left side at the top of the navigation column, it says 2012 Back to School, Back to Scrapping, Get Organized Challenge. So just by clicking on that button, that's going to take you to the challenge page. Now, if you need to download the workbook, um, it's right here. It says download the 2012 Fall Back to School, Back to Scrapping workbook. And if you still need to join the Get Organized Challenge Facebook group, that's here where it says second, join the Facebook group. Um, 
And then as you scroll down, then you're going to see the webinar schedule, and then each of the previous challenges are posted there, the videos for the challenges. So today, uh, after everything uploads and we get it converted over, whatever has to happen, uh, right here it'll say it, there'll be a video of today's challenge. So if you need to um, watch it again later or you want to share it with a friend or whatever, that's where you can find all of that information. So let me go back here to our This Week's Challenge page. And um, and now I'm going to open up the question panel. So if you've typed in questions during the um, session, this is the time that I will um, answer those for you. So Wendy says, what do you suggest for shapes, their own section or in with numbers, et cetera, or themes? And I actually have um, a, in my theme section, um, there's something for shapes that mostly deals with templates, actually in that shape category, um, but you could put circles or squares or stars or anything like that right in there, and then you know that's where to go for a generic shape. Now, the other side of that coin is the rainbow side of the coin. So if you want to think, like if you punch out a bunch of red circles, I'm gonna, when I think of I need a red circle, I might think mm, that's going to be in shape. Other people might think, oh, it's probably in red. So again, you're going to have to go with your gut on that. I like the shape category, especially because I, and I see circles and squares and all that stuff together. But it depends on how you go mentally. So some of you are going to end up with all your shapes that are pre-done. They're going to already be in your rainbow section, or if it's a, I don't know, if it's something that's been punched out of Christmas paper or whatever, it'll be in Christmas. And then some of you will have that shape category in the theme A to Z under S. That's what I've got. And I've got my templates in there as well. So. And usually I put my templates in the page protector, in the super size single or whatever, because they're easy to pull in and out. But a lot of them have a three-hole punch, and you can just put them right on your um, binder as well. I hope that answers your question. Cindy, my good friend Cindy's on today with us this morning. Hi, Cindy. I love Pigeon Forge. This is my first time in Pigeon Forge. So, um, and we're going to go do a little hiking in the Smokies this afternoon when we're all done here. Anne says, can you talk a little louder or closer to the mic? Um, let's see, Kathy says, Kathy says, this question is not for reading out loud, but I'm going to read it out loud anyway because it might be information other people need. So I've been trying to reach you by email and phone about my order for scrap rack because I want to combine two packages without duplication if possible. How should I contact you for an order? So um, our phone number is one eight six six. I'm going to type this in, 226-1311. Uh, Karen answers that. She checks voicemail every morning before she gets started. So uh, I'm not sure if maybe you don't have a good number if you haven't heard back, Kathy. But the other option is um, customer service at thescraprack.com. And that's going to be Joanne. I'm going to send this to all of you. So anybody that needs that information, it should pop up on your screen. Um, but um, but we can certainly work with you. If there's something in the scrap rack package that you want uh, that's not exactly right for you, we're pretty flexible. Karen, who, who you'll talk to if you call um, the 866 number, and that's probably the best way to get something special, um, she's totally happy to work with you. So if there's something in a package that doesn't quite fit your needs, we want you to have things that work for you rather than things that are just going to be stuff that will end up in your purge box. So definitely call us and let us try to work out a package or help you choose a package that's going to be perfect. Um, Wendy says she's lost sound. So hopefully, I didn't see a bunch of people abandon the website. So, But hopefully, everybody can still hear me, I hope. Um, Shelly says, for theme section, I was thinking about that the tabs would be labeled with each theme. I noticed this has a to Z in that section is one system better than the other. The only difference is, Shelley, some if you're tagging each of your dividers with each individual theme, you can end up with a lot of dividers, especially if you have small themes. So let's take ballet for an example. If you just if you had ballet, a ballet theme, but you only had one sheet of paper and one embellishment in ballet, and but you had used a whole divider for that, then it probably it's a lot of dividers for, for very little benefit. It might be better to go themes A through C and then use the self-adhesive tab on the ballet 
page so that you can still get there and find that page or pages very quickly, but you don't actually have to use as many dividers. They're expensive and they're heavy and they take up more space on your on your binder than a page. So there's a lot of reasons, um, a lot of reasons to use the tabs instead. With that said, we have many, many, many customers who love the tabs because or the divider tabs because they make things really clean. They're all the same size. You can keep them in order and all that good stuff. So it's it's kind of up to you, but both things work very well. Catherine says, thank you for mentioning the small box sorting. I seem to have missed that in previous sessions, and I have been overwhelmed with the ebb and flow of, of the sorting station. So good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that's helpful to you, Catherine. But yeah, if, if you work in those little small containers at a time and put everything away, then you also get this sort of instant sense of gratification that you've accomplished something, right? So even if it's a tiny container and it only took you five minutes to sort it, put it in your scrap rack pages and put it on the scrap rack, you can look at that tiny empty container and go, hey, one down, and you're done. And so you get that boost. Your, your brain loves that success, you know, that you get that boost of, of dopamine that says, woo, I got that done, woo, I'm a winner, woo, success. And then that motivates you to keep going. It's kind of silly, but it is how the brain works. It always says, do you put your buttons in the scrap rack even if you have a ton? Like a button junkie. Valerie's a button junkie. I am not a button junkie, but what I would recommend, Valerie, is to put some of each button um, in your scrap rack and then maybe have a back stock area for all those other buttons. Because the truth of the matter is, what you need at your fingertips in your scrap rack is what you would use during any given scrapbooking event. So whether that's a one hour event or a three day weekend away, you want to be able to have that much with you. So, but you don't, if you have 5,000 red buttons, you probably only need a dozen or two dozen at the max red buttons at your fingertips. So fill those two Ziploc bags with red buttons the rest of your red buttons in your red back stock area, and then when you use up those two little Ziploc bags of red buttons, you can go back and refill both of them and put them back in your scrap rack, but you're not looking at 10,000 red buttons when you only really need to see a couple dozen. I hope that helps. Hi, it's Levi. Which scrap rack page is best for large, tall fabric flowers? Um, I would say it's probably going to either be the the Fantastic Four, depending on, so the Fantastic Four is six by six pages. So if your flower is, you know, six inches around or a little bit smaller, that Fantastic Four is going to be great. Now, if you have, when you say something long, you might need to look at then either the triple play page, which is 12 inches long and four inches deep, or the double extra long page. Let me see if I can bounce ahead so you know what I'm talking about here. They're in our new, our new one. So, um, up here in the upper right-hand corner is the triple play, so that's three long pockets, and then it back in the, oops, go back here, uh, the fabulous four, and the, and the, so the double extra long is the second page from the, um, from the left, and the fabulous four is the third page kind of in the center with the yellow, so depending on the size of the flower, so either one of those would work great. Shauna says, many of the sticker packages contain more than one of our four categories. Do you cut them apart? Um, it, it just depends exactly what you've got, Shauna. So when you buy something um, that comes in a package, a lot of times it all goes together somehow or some way. Like that entire package might be themes, or the entire package might be calendar year, seasons, whatever. Um, and then much like the paper stacks, you may need, rather than, it just depends on time. So if you get that sticker pack, and it's, let's say it's seasons, and it has one 12 by 12 sheet of stickers for each month, then I, then I would separate them because it's pretty small. But if you buy a stack of, you know, a, a booklet of 100 rub-on sheets, and the rub-ons are everything about um, the seasons, Right? I wouldn't separate all those rub on sheets. I would just put that whole little booklet right in the front of the seasons category. You just want those things to pop up for you so that you remember that you're there and you're going to go through them. So if you bought a sort of a generic sticker thing about family and it has boys and girls and grandparents and all that stuff together, then I would put that in the family category. So it just, two, there's two things. One, how how grouped together are those things. I think once you start looking at stuff, you'll kind of realize there's a major category that I can put this into. 
and then how much time do you have? So you kind of have to base on those two things. But remember, you want it to pop up for you so that you'll see it. Amy says, please describe what the foliage is like on the trees in Tennessee. I'm sorry to tell you that it hasn't started changing yet. <laughs> in two more weeks, it's supposed to change. So right now, everything's just really green and pretty. There's a little bit of color popping out. I'm looking out the hotel room window. But it's not beautiful yet. I'm just going to miss that by about two weeks, I'm sorry to say. Natalie says, I tried to use the fall challenge coupon, but I could not find where I was supposed to enter in the checkout process. Could you please advise? I can do better than advise. Let's go back to our website and let's pretend to buy something. So let's go scrap rack. And I'm going to buy a scrap rack basic and put it in my cart. Oops, my cart's over here. View cart. Then I'm going to check out. So right when you get to the checkout screen, um, right here at the very top, it says coupon gift certificate. And you would put it in that box. And then you have to hit the apply button. So if I put in the code fall G G O C 12, I'm going to hit apply. And then it's going to come back and say your your code has been applied. But it doesn't change the total in the cart yet. Um, you will see the, the correct total in the cart when you go on to the next screen. So in this screen, I'm just going to choose um, you know, what, what my shipping address is, what shipping method I'm going to use, and then select my payment. And then when I go on to the next screen, that's where I'm actually going to put in the payment information and it's going to change and show the total, um, it's going to show the discount there, and then I'm going to put my payment information in at the very end. So um, you can work all the way through before you ever have to give your credit card and see what your shipping options are and how much it's going to cost and what the discount is actually going to be. You just keep going until you get to the screen, and it should show just fine. Again, if you do have any trouble with that, feel free to just call Karen or email Joanna at Customer Service, and we can either walk you through, or if there's some kind of problem with the website, we can take a look at that as well. Now, for those of you who may have tried to order in the last two days, our security um, key needed to be regenerated on the website. And um, so it wouldn't let you use uh, credit cards for the last about 36 hours. All of that um, has been regenerated and refreshed. So everything's working on the website. So if you had trouble with that before, um, it's all fixed now. Oh, oops, I think I got a little far. Um, Natalie's from France. Oh, I didn't read all the way to the bottom of your question. Natalie, thank you for joining us from so far away, but that should all work now. Uh, also, if you are somebody ordering internationally, if you're ordering from Canada, you, you can order. We have a retailer, scraprack.ca, on the website, and they'll be able to give you the pricing from them, include shipping and customs and all that stuff that we can't do from our end before we ship it out. So um, that is an option for you. And if you're somebody that's ordering internationally, when you place your order, once your order is boxed and weighed, Karen will email you and give you some choices for exactly what that's going to cost. Because sometimes the website isn't quite right or doesn't have all the options available that we can actually use for shipping. So for you foreigners, there's going to be some other um, email exchange there to make sure we can get you the best rate shipping things to you. Valerie says, when sorting cardstock, how do you remember the brand it is if you mix up your brand? And it's important to you to know who you are using to give credit. So Valerie brings this up, and it is something that's for people who like to submit their work to the magazines or websites or for design team. Knowing the brand is really important. So there's a couple of ways that you can do it, Valerie. If you're using a scrap rack um, System, you can just write, you can just put a little note right in the pocket page that says this is basic gray or whatever it is. You can also group things by manufacturer within a category. So let's say you're using um, basic gray and as an example, if you have basic gray Christmas stuff, you may want to use those project planner pages um, so that you can keep the tag in. So this page at the bottom here, because it's double sided. You can keep the tag right in with that product group so that you know what all the, where all those things came from. I think the only time that you're mostly not, like I think the solid colored papers are going to be the most difficult um, with that. Most papers have a little tag across the top that tells you who the manufacturer is, I believe. But other than that, just slipping a little note in with it 
would solve that problem. And so you could have it in the right theme category and still know who the manufacturer was. I hope that answers your question sufficiently. Patty says, any suggestions for sorting solid cardstock? Uh, whoever thought there were so many shades of black and white. Um, I would not let yourself get overwhelmed at first. And, and so if you have tons of cardstock that's rainbow, just do major groups. Reds, that you're going to have dark reds, light reds, and purpley reds, and really clean reds, cherry reds, and candy apple reds. Just get all the major colors together first, and then you can kind of break them down and, and, and color wheel them out. But I would use a color wheel, and I would use major categories. I do use major categories. If you look at my green category, it's not perfectly light to dark because sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Or it's really hard to go, now this is a gray green, does it go before the blue green? They're about the same tone, but they're a different shade. So you've got all of those levels of things. But if you can get this, everything together, here's all my greens so that you can thumb through it and match it up, then you're going to be way ahead of the game. And then you can sort of micromanage the color wheel as you have more time, a little bit at a time as you're working through. I know what you say, I know what you're saying though about black and white, Patty. It is amazing how many shades of white there are before you even get into something that you're going to call tan or cream before you even get to white. Erin says, do you take your sticker embellishments out of the package so they fit better in the system? I feel like I get too bulky with folding over the part of the packaging where there, um, there's a part of me that wants to keep the package. Wait, no. I feel like I get too bulky with folding over part of the packaging. There's part of me that feels like I have to keep the packaging. What are your thoughts? I take everything out of the packaging unless for some reason I think that um, it needs the packaging for the protective aspect. So going back to the just the earlier question about having the brand name on things, if you're someone who's Working for a design team, you need to at least cut the top off the package and include it with that item so that you know who the manufacturer is if it's not clear from the inside. Um, but most of the time, I take things out of the package. So uh, one thing I don't take out of the package usually is the rub-on. Um, and truthfully, I, you could. It's just, um, you know, some of them have that protective sheet over the top or over the back, whichever you want to think about it, I guess. So if the packaging is big and thick and bulky, I'll cut like the cardboard top off the package and just leave it a little bit in that clear cellophane if it's a rub-on. But almost anything else, I'm with you, Erin. The packaging, it just adds more layers, and it's harder to get to, and it takes longer to get that thing out. And so the more steps you can eliminate in the process, the better off you're going to be. So I would say get rid of the packaging if you can do it. Melanie says, ballet stuff could go in art, the art section with music and painting and such. I also have a military section with Army and Air Force and, Na and Navy papers and embellishments and a separate patriotic section instead of 4th of July. In a, second, in a separate patriotic section instead of 4th of July and Memorial Day and Veterans Day. So absolutely. And so what Melanie is bringing up is really important, which is keeping the together you would use together. So as you gather your product, and her thought is ballet, that's an fine arts. It goes with orchestra. It goes with this. It goes with these other things that I'm interested in. And now she has all of those things together in one place. And the same with patriotic America. It's all together in one place. So, But you have to remember, keep things together you would use together. And what does your gut say? So if you're like Melanie and you can do this patriotic section where you have all of those things together and your brain says that would be in patriotic, then it's really easy to find everything at one time. So um, keep that in mind. Go with your gut. Kathy says, where do you keep your empty unused scrap art pages, baggies, file folders, et cetera, as, so they are available when you need to put things away? So truthfully, I have an empty spinder. It's not empty, but I have a spinder that has all my empty scrap rack pages on it. It's in the top, no, the second drawer down. So if you look at my, in, in this room that's on the website, if you, you'll see the drawers behind. Second drawer down has a spinder, and all that's on it is empty pages. And then I just use a um, sticky note so that says, you know, super single, double X, triple point. They're in order by shape. But you know, once you start putting all those pages together, it's hard to see, you know, what the shapes are. So all the different sizes are just tagged with a sticky note. And that makes it easy for me to pull the sticky note off and move it if I need to. Um, so I have that. And then there's a hanging basket that's, again, right, um, available, easy to get to, which you can see when you look um, at the website. So Let's see if I can go here to this room. Let's see if it's in this picture, in these pictures. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and see. So 
So it's hard to see the hanging basket, I guess. There's a hang so there's a hanging basket right under these pink baskets on the shelf, and that has a little um, basket with Ziploc baggies and stuff in that, and then that second drawer down kind of right underneath it. I actually keep a um, binder with all my pages on it, and that way when I take pages out of my scrap rack too, I have a place for them. So great question, Kathy. Get, set yourself up a place. I know one of the other gals just has a basket, and it has uh, pens and Ziploc bags and scrap rack pages and little pieces of paper for stamps and inks and those things that we're going to talk about later, but everything she needs to integrate a new product into her scrap rack is right there in the basket. So again, if you can set yourself up with kind of a staging area for being able to put new things away, it's going to be easy, it's going to be visible. It's a great way to do that. So thank you for asking that question, Kathy. I would not have um, brought that up, except for I think that it maybe it is maybe it does come up in another post from a Facebook gal in one of the later webinars. But yes, set yourself up for success that way. Um, what do you recommend? This is from Jana. What do you recommend for metal embellishments? I have a boatload of these, and they don't fit into any theme. So it just kind of depends what they are. So I would, I have a, a metallic section at the back of my rainbow. So things like different shapes of clips, you know, spirally clips or round clips or square clips, those kind of things. Little metal plates that you can write on or emboss on or whatever. Those are all just in the metallic section. That's a great way to put, place to put them. And so I have metallics, and then behind that I have it divided off gold, silver, copper, and bronze. And so that might work really well for those um, metal embellishments, Jana. Lori says, when you place your buttons that are orange with the orange rainbow, how do you remember the other colors you have of those style buttons if you want to add some more color? It's super simple. You don't have to remember. Because if you have the orange buttons and you go, I'm going to use these orange buttons, and then you think this needs some more color, it needs green. When you go to your green section, there you see those green buttons. So if you're talking about like using multiple button colors, which we see in a lot of great designs, um, you're, you're going to be retraining yourself to think this orange would look really great with green, or this ribbon that I'm working with has purple in it. I need some purple you know, buttons. And then you're going to go to purple, and you're going to see the buttons, or you're going to see everything in purple. So it's one of the tricks that we've been trained to do, that you've got to keep those buttons together, or you won't remember that you have purple buttons. But when you start thinking about things in terms of color, and then you say, I would like to put purple buttons with this orange or green buttons with this orange, a simple flip to that section, and you're going to see the purple buttons that you've got because they're just going to pop up for you. So it really makes it so much easier. Anna says, when sorting the matte stacks by rainbow, should you separate the adhesive backed ones from the regular ones or put them in the rainbow? I would um, just put them all in the rainbow and not worry about how um, they attach down. May says, what is the typical shipping cost when ordering the Princess Collection? I live in Tennessee. Um, I am not sure. That's a long haul from uh, Tacoma, Washington, and it's a fairly heavy package. But like I said, when you go through um, the website, let me back up here, um, you will be able to see what your choices are. So in this screen right here, this is the, the first um, or the second checkout screen. You have your select shipping method, and if you hit the drop-down list, it'll show you what all of the rates are, so you can know whether it go parcel post or UPS ground or any of those kinds of things. So um, you can choose that or know exactly what it is. Once you get your cart loaded or unloaded or change your cart, you can always go all the way through to this screen before you ever have to pay for anything, and it'll tell you exactly what your shipping costs are going to be. Kelly says, I have chipboard that isn't a theme calendar A to Z. Not sure how to sort or arrange. But rainbow help. So with chipboard, chipboard's really big and thick and bulky. And so I'm assuming that what you have, since it doesn't match the theme, is that it's probably a shape, like swirls of chipboard or circles or squares or tags or those kind of things. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do it. And I'll be honest with you, because chipboard is so bulky, I'm going to go back to this picture of my room here. I have a bunch of chipboard alphabets. Let's see if they're in this picture of my desk space. No, they're not. I did a little post on the blog, though, that showed how to store. OK, so in this second row down picture, <laughs> all the way over on the right side at the very bottom, that little box is my chipboard box. And it's actually mostly alphabets and some shapes. So you just have a few chipboard things, they're fine. 
you can throw your chipboard swirls into your shape section with no problem or your chipboard tags into your shape section and the tags category with no problem. But if you have lots of chipboard, putting it into a sorter like this, and, it's, and that is sorted small to large. So when I want to work with something that's chipboard, I can pull that whole box out and put it on my desk, and I can flip through it really quickly to find what I need. So if you're a chipboard junkie, that might be a good way to go. Now, there is a, I did do a blog post about that. Um, so if you're at the web, again, if you're at the website and you go um, to the top of the page where it says Tiffany's blog, that'll take you to the blog, to different, the different blog posts. This is one I did about how to sort your handbags. It was the most recent one. But down in here, I think it was in 2010, you can click, click through and you'll find one that's for that. Um, for chipboard organization, and it will show you all the pictures. So here it is, August, chipboard organization in our new crop room. So that will show you close up and personal what that container looks like and how I sorted those um, chipboard pieces, because chipboard is very cumbersome. Glenda says, what should we do with extra die cut shapes, such as different things, label shapes or definitive shapes, such as hard spurs, et cetera. So again, uh, going back to a shape section, now if I had hearts, it would probably be in February Valentine's Day because anytime I want something that's love representative, I think of Valentine's Day even if it's something that's not for Valentine's Day. Birds, I'm probably going to put in spring or summer depending on how you think about that. Apples are definitely going to go in um, fall for me. Now some people might put apples in um, cooking or family and home, but again, it's whatever your gut reaction is for those things, but hearts, stars, circles, squares, chevrons, those kinds of things, you putting them in a, just a shape section might be a great option. Okay. Beatrice says, I ordered from the Canadian place and they did not have all the things that you have. I also could not find the mobile tool caddy at Office Depot here in Canada. Is it only available in the U.S.? I don't know uh, about that, Beatrice. I'm sorry to say. I think you could search in the Canada website using the you for the cart, and then maybe you could find it that way um, if you use that SKU number. And the SKU number is if you go into the website and go to Crop Crate Apron, and then you just click on any one of those aprons dun, 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 and scroll to the bottom. The Office Depot SKU, SKU in the US is that 987304 number. So you could probably um, email Office Depot or ask at your local Office Depot that that's the American number that you want and they would be able to tell you what it is in Canada. Um, let's see, I ordered it. Um, you know, they are constantly ordering with us. I know they have put in orders twice in the last week, um, scraprack.ca. So if they don't have what you want, it's probably just that they're replenishing. So please, but please feel free to email them and say, hey, I'm looking for this and you don't have it and they will certainly bring it in for you. I, they're trying to keep everything in stock. They've been doing a booming business um, up there for us and I think it's probably just that they haven't figured out how high their stock levels need to be and they've run out of something. Anna says, hello, I am so happy. This is the first time I am able to join live because of schedule conflict. However, I have watched, listened to the recorded sessions before and thank you so much for all the tips. Maybe now I'll be able to organize my stuff. You're so welcome, Anna. I'm glad you could join us live. It's really fun when you get to come live. Deborah says, if you use the small tabs and then have to add a new one, will you get the tabs out of order or overlap? So Deborah, welcome to the sisterhood of OCDness. Yes, that drives me crazy too. Some people it doesn't bother if their tabs are not exactly in line, but I'm with you and it bugs me when my tabs are not exactly in line. And so I would be someone who would just um, change out the pages and put the tab in so that they're all lined up. So I can't offer you any advice except that's part of the illness of <laughs> being uh, obsessed by organization and neatness. So you just have to take that one as it comes or you have to take a deep breath and say, I'm not going to let it bother me that I have one tab my tabs go, you know, in order or out of order or they overlap a little bit. So, but I feel your pain. I know exactly where you're at. I wish I, but other than reordering your tabs, there's no, there's no option. Erin says, will one of your topics of the seminar be about organizing for crop? 
when you're working on a variety of themes during the weekend, but you don't want to take your whole room with you, yes, that's the last one, Erin. We really talk about how to take what you need. But it's really important as you're going through the process that you keep that in mind if you're somebody who likes to go to crops. Keeping things together you would use together is really important because you can take what you need rather than taking everything to make sure you've got what you want. So really sort of um, going through this process is really going to help those of you who love to go to crops, especially weekend crops, where you can pack up exactly what you need. You know, so often we know we're going to work on sports pages at a crop, and yet because of the way we have things organized, we end up also having to take our Christmas things with us or, you know, our spring items or whatever. But organizing this, so especially if you're using a scrap rack, it becomes super simple to just take exactly what you need. Beatrice says, um, I have started with the paper a rack at a time and was really impressed with it. I use a scrap box for them. So great job, Beatrice. Sometimes just breaking down that task and doing it one thing at a time, you'll be amazed at the results that you get. And once you see that it's working, it's really easy to, to stay the course and do the work. And that's one of the reasons we start with paper, because you can see a result right away and you go, hey, this really does work. I just need to stick with it. So good job. Um, Mary says, what is a backstock area? A backstock area, which I haven't talked about yet um, in detail, is when you have a lot of things. Like, let's say you get a great deal and you buy 500 red brads and you have a three-pound jar of red glitter and you have, you know, a thousand red buttons and you've got a, three inches of red paper. But you don't need all of those things at your fingertips, that many of those things. So if you're somebody who has big quantities of things, and it tends to be color most of the time, if you start a back stock area by color, so you might have a box that's red, and you're going to put all of your, you know, 2,000 red buttons and your eyelets and your brads and your glitter and your paper in that red box, and but you only fill a small Ziploc bag, so you're going to fill a 2 by 2 Ziploc bag with red glitter and put it in your red section. That's all the red glitter you probably need, right? A little bit of glitter goes a long way. But when you flip to red, then you see it, and it's usable. You don't have to then go off and find the jar of glitter or remember the jar of glitter and go look for it. You can use what you've had. Now when you empty something out, let's say it's the red glitter, you can grab the red back stock box, bring it to your table, and refill the red glitter. And at the same time as you have the back stock box out, you can take a quick look at your eyelets and your brads and your paper and whatever else and refill those items, those buttons, so all your little baggies get a refill even though you're not empty, and then you put the red back stock box away. So just by keeping those colors together for back stock, when you refill one, you can refill everything at the same time, and it's quick, and it's easy, and it makes sense. And I don't recommend buying huge quantities of things, but when you get that great deal on a 1,000 red brads for a dollar, you just, sometimes you just got to take it. But that also gives you a place to put all those red brads. So you know when you get home, you're going to fill a little baggie and put it in your scrap rack, and you're going to take that big bag and put it in your red back stock. So you have a place. And once everything has a home, it's easy to put it in that home. It's just when we don't know where things are going to go that they end up getting piled up in the corner or in the closet or whatever. So I hope that makes sense. Susan says, where do you buy the mini Ziploc bags? Amazingly enough, Susan, we sell them on our website. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? You can go to the accessories page and we have them. But I think that you can also buy them at other places. I know Paper Zone used to sell them um, here. Our Paper Zone's closed down. But this is the accessories page. And you can see we've got, oh, those are showing out of stock. Oh, those are big ones. Those are great big Ziploc bags. Uh, but there's this little embellishment Ziploc bag here, and then we also have a 3 by 5 Ziploc bag somewhere on this page as well. This page just got reconfigured with the like button, so I'm not quite sure where everything is lining up just yet on there. There they are, the 3 by 5 bags are there, so depending on the pocket size that you need. But I think you can buy them other places as well. And I know some people use like the Ziploc, the Ziploc brand, the ones that are called snack bags. People use those as well, and you can get those at the grocery store. Marilyn says, I was able to sort sequins while listening to the questions. This isn't as daunting as I had originally thought. Good job, Marilyn. And truthfully, I have had a, a number of people do some work while they're listening to the presentation. So if this is your hour that you might have today to listen to the presentation, or even next week if you're still working on embellishments or whatever, yeah, bring that to your table and while you're listening and maybe do a little work while you're in the process of listening as well. So good job. Glad to hear it. Shauna says, thanks. That answered my question perfectly. 
Melanie says, where would you start a rub-on sheet of phrases like dream belief? I have a little section at the back of my themes A to Z category that's labeled W-O-W, words of wisdom. And that is where I put everything that's generic. So things like dream, believe, uh, those kinds of things that don't fit it. Now, sometimes you're going to have ones that say love or family, and those are easy. The love is going to go for me in February under um, Valentine's Day, and family is going to go under family. But these generic things, words of wisdom, poems, rub on stickers, inspirational quotes, whatever, then you have a place to put them, and you can just kind of flip through there when you're just looking for a little caption for something. So thank you for bringing that up, Melanie. Tammy asks, can you return a package of pages that you haven't used in exchange for a package that you would use more, or do you have to do a refund? Um, so you can send them back, and then we can credit you, or you can order your new ones and send the old ones back, and we'll issue a credit that way. But you can absolutely return them, and we can do it either way that you want. I mean, you can return them for a credit and then spend the credit on the website, you know, a scrap rack credit, or you can return them. We can credit your credit card, and then you can buy what you want. So whichever easier for you, we're happy to do. Jill says, you are in my neck of the woods, so at least my hometown. I've moved from the Smokies to the Rockies. Be sure to check out Cades Cove, one of my favorite places. I think that's where we're going this afternoon, actually, Jill. So I'll have to post up on Facebook after we do our little afternoon hike. JoJo says, so if you're using paper storage boxes, talk about how to organize embellishments of these. So if you're using paper storage boxes for your paper, there's you can either use, so I'm assuming you're not using a scrap rack, JoJo, when you ask this. If the, you can use the paper storage boxes and then in conjunction with large Ziploc bags or file folders for your embellishments, if your embellishments are in little Ziploc bags or whatever. So let's say you have your themes, paper, football, or sports paper all themed together. Then you would take a file folder or a Ziploc bag and put all of your sports embellishments in that and put it right in the paper storage box right with that um, themed paper. So I hope that makes sense because you're going to try and keep those things together. Um, Barbara says, I made a lot of, I make a lot of cards and use photocopies and instructions. What should I do with these? Or do I use a separate folder with separators? Um, I'm, I'm not totally clear on the question. I'm thinking that you have instructions for how to make the cards and um, that you want to keep those instructions maybe with the completed card, um, but at least keep the instructions in case you use them later. So if you're a card maker, you would have your sentiments categories, right? Thank you, retirement, bon voyage, whatever it is. Those are categories um, that would maybe not make it for in themes for um, scrapbookers. So you would have this other sort of set of categories called sentiments. That would be thank you, bon voyage, retirement, whatever. And they could be right in your themes alphabetically as well, because you do make cards about baby and birthday. and those things would cross over to scrap racking too, to scrapbooking too. So try to think about um, grouping by sentiment and then just put that card um, idea right in with the sentiment that you want to use it with. The same way if you found a layout idea for Halloween, you would pull the layout idea out of the magazine and put it in your Halloween section. If you found a Halloween card idea, it would come out and go in Halloween. Or a thank you card sentiment idea, it would go right in with thank you. And you can put it in a regular 8.5 by 11 page protector. So when you're making a thank you card, you could see the completed card stored right there. And we're working on a brand new page um, for card storage. So hopefully that will be out in the spring. I can't really say anything about it right now, but it's going to be cool. It's in the process, and hopefully we're going to introduce it in the spring. Um, but you can do the same thing and just put those um, together in, in the right sentiment category so that you'll be able to find it. Anna says, is there a coupon for those of us taking the challenge? Yes, the coupon is fall G O C twelve and just enter it in the coupon code box. And when the email the follow up email goes out tomorrow from this, it'll be in that as well. So um, if you forget it or you didn't get the little thing I just kind of sent, then you'll um, you'll be able to it'll be in that email. Julie says, Why don't they offer all the products the the US site does on the Canadian site? Now that I'm thinking about it, the question might be some of the other brands. Um, if that's what you're like, the hot tool, and um, uh, what else do, do they not? So, so they, we offer a few products that we don't make on our website that that's con, that are convenient for people who use a scrap rack. So the hot tool is one of them. So that's this thing over here. We're out of stock on it right now, actually. 
it's showing up on the screen right now on the left side. Um, and that, if that's what you're talking about, I can definitely suggest to them that they try to bring those things in because they do complement the scrap rack product. Um, they, you know, we just buy them at that point wholesale and we retail them, which they could certainly do as well. So if you can give me a little bit more information about the things they don't have, that might be it. And that would better answer the question I had earlier about that as well. Joanne says, I sort by color alphabetically. I put all the colors in separate containers. It makes it so easy to know what I need and what I don't. So absolutely, good job. Uh, Julie says, need the Velcro piece to attach the expansion base and couldn't get it and contacted customer service and they said to order from the Canadian site, but they don't have it. Oh, um, Julie, just <laughs> we'll just drop it in the mail to you. It's just a little thing that's going to go. And, and you're right, we probably should send some up to Canada with their next order. So again, Julie, if you don't mind emailing customer service at the scraprack.com and just say, Tiffany said you would mail me one. And um, well, here, I'm going to type in, here's it, K, K slasher at the scrap rack. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send to you, send this to you. So hopefully you just got this K slasher is Karen at the scrap rack and she'll just drop one in the mail to you. Don't worry about it. And I'll let Joanna know at customer service. She probably didn't really know the best, you know, should I just assume they have them, but I'll, I'll follow through on that and make sure everybody knows what's going on. Lucy said, I'm sorry I have distractions today. I was wondering if you talked about the heat tool to customize the scrap rack pages. I did not talk about the heat tool. You can find it on the accessories page. If you click on it, which I'll do right now since I have it up, there's a video, um, it's not showing here, show all. There's a video right there on the page that teaches you how to use it to modify your pages. So if you want to come up with some um, individual configuration of pages, this little video will show you how to do it. Um, they're showing us out of stock on our website right now, which means they, they'll be back in stock within the next seven to 10 days on that product. So um, if it's something you need, they will be back soon. Why don't, Destiny says, or Diane says, why don't I see any of the, um, of the questions? I don't know. I don't know why you guys can't see the questions. I can only see them, I guess. Cheryl says, I only do cards. Would this system work for my stamps and dies? Will you be doing a session on how to do this? Yes, I will. And yes, it works for cards. And yes, it works for acrylic mounted stamps and things like spellbinders, dies, and nestabilities and those kind of things. They all work in great. And it's coming up. It's just a couple of sessions up the road here. As a matter of fact, I can go back here and tell you uh, what the sessions are going to be. So here's the list. Uh, so we do pictures. Uh, next, and then number five is memorabilia journaling notes and a holding album. Six is stamp punches and cutting systems. And that's where a lot of those things are going to come in. And then inks, chalks, and pens. And then finally getting ready for a crop. So we will answer all those questions in detail. Amy says, awesome tip on the scrap rack pages. That will clear my bed off in my craft room. I had no idea what to do with the pages until I fill them up. There you go. I'm glad that I'm glad that was asked then. Lucy says, are you ever in the Eastern Shore, Maryland area? Um, I think the closest we've been is New Hampshire. I'm not sure that there are any scrapbook shows up there. Um, but our new schedule will come out probably in November for next year or maybe early December and it will be on the website. So if you're looking to see if we're going to be in your area, you can come go right here, Scrap Rack Roadshow, and then you can see every place, everywhere that we're going to be. So we're going to be in Cincinnati next week, then Chicago, and then our last show of the year is in Seattle. Um, for extreme OCDers, I use repositionable tabs. Oh, great suggestion, Louise. Great suggestion. Um, so back to who asked me about moving your tabs around, Post-it did just come up with, I think last year, repositionable tabs. So I would look for those at the office supply store and then you can realign them so everything's in line. It would be great. Denise says, my husband and I have watched this together and he is impressed with what you say and said he will help me. Good job and way to go. And you know what, Denise, you're very lucky because men are lineal thinkers. And so once they have a plan in place for how to do something, especially like this, that's lineal, and each thing connects to the next thing um, in a very rational fashion, it's really easy for men to understand how this works. You know, men and women are wired so differently. Women tend to connect everything together like a great big ball of yarn. 
and men are, it's easy for men to segment things off. So um, way to go. Kudos to him for being willing to help you. And if he's listening now, thank you so much for being willing to help. Um, and it will probably make a big difference in the dining room table. You might get to eat there more often if your wife is constantly using it to scrap because her scrapbook room is full of other stuff. So way to go, Denise and husband. Julie says, why do not sell it saying have to order it? They do not sell it saying have to order it from the U.S. Okay, so I don't know what those things are. I'll check that out with, with uh, scrapwreck.ca, though. Wanda says, I'm a multi-crafter and have my grandmother's buttons of, of friends who passed away, buttons plus stuff I have bought, which makes it makes for many kinds of items. Something I've done and am doing is taking pictures of them and putting them in my system. It's not as bulky. So again, and we talk about that, I guess, a little bit more as we get into the stamps and punches and stuff, but definitely can be used here. What you want to do is use your four section system to drive you to find the things that you have. So um, when Wanda is mentioning about taking pictures of things, we're going to see that a little bit more as we get into the stamps and punches. But when you've got something big and bulky, like all these buttons that she's collected, taking a picture, putting that picture in the section where you would where you would normally look for those things, and then just leaving a note, these are on the shelf in the button box, is going to drive you there. And so then you're actually going to see them. So it's going to pop up, remind you that you have them, and also direct you exactly where to use them. So good, good job. Christina says, the sound keeps cutting out. I have missed half of the talk. There's also an echo when I do get sound. I've tried two different headphones and my speakers, plus my screens haven't been changing most of the time. I will have to watch the video tonight. Well, hopefully, um, Christina, it's just something about download speed. Oh, and I will say that as I'm clicking back and forth out of the PowerPoint presentation and into the website, it is probably a what's available download, whether it's coming from here because I'm not I'm doing it wireless instead of hardwired in, or whether it's um, at the other end. Hopefully, the video will will reconcile all that. I apologize. Melanie says, "I just bought a package of 100 small bags at Office Depot. So there you go. You can get small Ziploc bags at Office Depot." Glenda says, "You can find different sized zippy bags through sites that sell jewelry and B. Michaels and Joanne are an option." Kristen says, came in late, but where should Smashbook things be stored? So mostly if Smashbook things are by category, then they should be in that category or that theme. If it's something unique to Smashbook that you want to keep separate as Smashbook, just put a section in your themes A to Z under S for Smashbook and put them all there together if that's how you're going to look for them. Nancy says, I'm working while listening too, and I am just about finished sorting seven feet of paper after four rounds of the webinar. Hooray, Nancy, great job. Baby steps take a while, but it does get things done. Thanks, Tiffany, for the continuing motivation. You're so welcome. Um, Jill says, I ordered way too many scrap rack pages. Would it be okay to mention this on Facebook group to see if anyone likes to buy them? I've been purging and am determined to not grow my scrap rack beyond one base. Absolutely, Jill. So you can certainly put them uh, up on Facebook. And we have seen people trade, so uh, trade and sell scrap rack things. So if you have too much of one and not enough of the other, there may be a trade option in there. But there might also be somebody who just wants to buy those pages. So please feel free to post that on the Facebook page. And if there, you know, if you have whole packages, you can certainly return them as well. OK. Janine says, I am so Glad I met you in Duluth, Georgia. I got my starter set. I have used all the pages. Do you plan on some of the other pages in larger quantities? I need lots more. The only ones we have in the large quantities are the um, super size single and the double extra long. Super size comes in a 50 pack, and the double comes in a 25 pack. And then, of course, there's the variety packs where they um, you save a little bit of money when you do the variety packs, but you get a variety of the, of the things. So unfortunately, you don't have. Bigger quantities than anything other than those two. Hey, this is Karen. And she, she posts up, this is Karen. I'll be sure to add some to the next Canadian order. See, we've got that handle. Thanks, Karen. You're a star. Linda says, for those who can't wait for the hot tool to come back in stock, you can also find the hot tool um, in some of the woodworking departments at the other craft stores. So whether you have Michaels or Joann's or whatever, if that's an option. Julie says, thank you, thank you. Joanne says, the scrap rack system is perfect for me. Unfortunately, I have cats that won't leave it alone, so I had to sell it. I'm trying to implement the storage system otherwise, though. 
mm, the cats like that, probably that plasticky noise. We do have a dust cover, and if you put it over the top, if you have cats, it'll keep the cat hair um, off your step, as well as probably keep them from, from playing with your scrub rag. Kim says, do you need volunteers at your convention? And just, we usually do, Kim, and so I will usually put out, I have volunteers for the shows through the end of this year, um, but next year, um, at, once we know our show schedule, we'll put out an email and ask for volunteers. So keep your eye on that if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, Lucy says, oh, you were in Lancaster in July. That's close to me, darn. Yes, and we love it there. That's a great show. We have a really good time. Sound is good. Um, Lucy says, Jill, she can use your pages. So if you guys connect on Facebook, you should be in great shape. Anna says, thanks so much for all your hard work trying to get us organized. The entire time you've been talking, I've been sorting these mat sacks, and I have way too many, and apparently I'm colorblind at 2 a.m. when I sorted them earlier. Well, I'm glad you're getting work done while you're listening. Um, and Joanne said, the cats would claw the plastic dust cover. The dust cover is actually fabric, but, you know, some kitties are more, more claw, claws than others, I guess. So, and whatever works, so I'm, I'm glad you like this system. Okay, so that's the last of the questions. Thank you, everybody, for joining me this week. I hope you have a very productive week starting to organize those embellishments, and I hope that you're using the information that you have when you bring new things home to put them right away, even if you have to start a category for that particular thing. Um, watch for the email to go out uh, either tonight or tomorrow, and that'll have the code on it. But the code is for all of you who um, need that discount code. It's fall G O C Get Organized Challenge, and then the number twelve one two. So I'll, I'll just send that out, and you should all get a link to it. Um, and so. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm looking forward to talking to you or talking at you or with you or whatever I'm doing um, next Tuesday. So good luck. Work hard. Po don't forget to post your progress notes on Facebook or send them to us via email so we can get you into the drawing each week. Um, have a great week, and I look forward to talking to you soon.